The Diggers were a group of Protestant radicals in England, sometimes seen as forerunners of modern anarchism, and also associated with agrarian socialism and Georgism. Gerard Wynne Stanley's followers were known as True Levelers in 1649 and later became known as Diggers, because of their attempts to farm on common land. Their original name came from the belief in economic equality based upon a specific passage in the Acts of the Apostles. The Diggers tried by leveling land to reform the existing social order with an agrarian lifestyle based on their ideas for the creation of small, egalitarian rural communities. They were one of a number of nonconformist dissenting groups that emerged around this time. <laughs> <laughs> Historical background The year 1649 was a time of great social unrest in England. The parliamentarians had won the first English civil war but failed to negotiate a constitutional settlement with the defeated King Charles I when members of Parliament and the grandees in the new model army were faced with Charles's perceived duplicity, they tried and executed him. Government through the King's Privy Council was replaced with a new body called the Council of State, which due to fundamental disagreements within a weakened Parliament was dominated by the army. Many people became active in politics, suggesting alternative forms of government to replace the old order. Royalists wished to place King Charles II on the throne, men like Oliver Cromwell wished to govern with a plutocratic parliament voted in by an electorate based on property, similar to that which was enfranchised before the Civil War. Agitators called levellers, influenced by the writings of John Lilburn, wanted parliamentary government based on an electorate of every male head of a household. Fifth monarchy men advocated a theocracy, and the diggers, led by Gerard Wynne Stanley, advocated a more radical solution. Topic. Theory In 1649 Gerard Wynne Stanley and 14 others published a pamphlet in which they called themselves the ''True Levelers'' to distinguish their ideas from those of the levelers. Once they put their idea into practice and started to cultivate common land, both opponents and supporters began to call them ''diggers''. The diggers' beliefs were informed by Wynne Stanley's writings which envisioned an ecological interrelationship between humans and nature, acknowledging the inherent connections between people and their surroundings. Wynne Stanley declared that, "...true freedom lies where a man receives his nourishment and preservation, and that is in the use of the earth." An undercurrent of political thought which has run through English society for many generations and resurfaced from time to time for example, in the Peasants' Revolt in 1381 was present in some of the political factions of the 17th century, including those who formed the diggers. It involved the common belief that England had become subjugated by the Norman yoke. This legend offered an explanation that at one time a golden era had existed in England before the Norman conquest in 1066. From the conquest on, the diggers argued, the common people of England had been robbed of their birthrights and exploited by a foreign ruling class. Topic. Practice Topic. St. George's Hill, Weybridge, Surrey The Council of State received a letter in April 1649 reporting that several individuals had begun to plant vegetables in common land on St. George's Hill, Weybridge near Cobham, Surrey at a time when food prices reached an all-time high. Sanders reported that they had invited all to come in and help them, and promise them meat, drink, and clothes. They intended to pull down all enclosures and cause the local populace to come and work with them. They claimed that their number would be several thousand within ten days. It is feared they have some design in hand. In the same month, the diggers issued their most famous pamphlet and manifesto, called The True Levelers Standard Advanced. At the behest of the local landowners, the commander of the New Model Army, Sir Thomas Fairfax, duly arrived with his troops and interviewed Wynne Stanley and another prominent member of the diggers, William Everard. Everard suspected that the diggers were in serious trouble and soon left the group. Fairfax, meanwhile, having concluded that diggers were doing no harm, advised the local landowners to use the courts, when Stanley remained and continued to write about the treatment they received. 
The harassment from the Lord of the Manor, Francis Drake not the famous Francis Drake, who had died more than fifty years before, was both deliberate and systematic. He organized gangs in an attack on the diggers, including numerous beatings and an arson attack on one of the communal houses. Following a court case, in which the diggers were forbidden to speak in their own defense, they were found guilty of being ranters, a radical sect associated with liberal sexuality, though in fact when Stanley had reprimanded ranter Lawrence Clarkson for his sexual practices. Having lost the court case, if they had not left the land, then the army could have been used to enforce the law and evict them, so they abandoned St. George's Hill in August 1649, much to the relief of the local freeholders. Topic. Little Heath near Cobham Some of the evicted diggers moved a short distance to Little Heath in Surrey. Eleven acres hectares were cultivated, six houses built, winter crops harvested, and several pamphlets published. After initially expressing some sympathy for them, the local lord of the manor of Cobham, Parson John Platt, became the chief enemy. He used his power to stop local people helping them and he organized attacks on the diggers and their property. By April 1650, Platt and other local landowners succeeded in driving the diggers from Little Heath. <laughs> <laughs> Wellingborough, Northamptonshire There was another community of diggers close to Wellingborough in Northamptonshire. In 1650, the community published a declaration which started A declaration of the grounds and reasons why we the poor inhabitants of the town of Wellingborough, in the county of Northampton, have begun and give consent to dig up, manure and sow corn upon the common, and waste ground, called Bearshank belonging to the inhabitants of Wellingborough, by those that have subscribed and hundreds more that give consent. This colony was probably founded as a result of contact with the Surrey diggers. In late March 1650, four emissaries from the Surrey colony were arrested in Buckinghamshire bearing a letter signed by the Surrey diggers including Gerard Wynne Stanley and Robert Costa inciting people to start digger colonies and to provide money for the Surrey diggers. According to the newspaper A Perfect Diurnal the emissaries had travelled a circuit through the counties of Surrey, Middlesex, Hertfordshire, Bedfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Berkshire, Huntingdonshire and Northamptonshire before being apprehended. On 15 April 1650 the Council of State ordered Mr Pentlow, a Justice of the Peace for Northamptonshire to proceed against the levellers in those parts and to have them tried at the next quarter session. The Ivor diggers recorded that nine of the Wellingborough diggers were arrested and imprisoned in Northampton jail and although no charges could be proved against them the justice refused to release them. Captain William Thompson, the leader of the failed Banbury Mutiny, was killed in a skirmish close to the community by soldiers loyal to Oliver Cromwell in May 1649. <laughs> Ivor, Buckinghamshire Another colony of diggers connected to the Surrey and Wellingborough colony was set up in Ivor, Buckinghamshire about 14 miles 23 kilometers from the Surrey diggers colony at St. George's Hill see Keith Thomas, another digger broadside, past and present number 42, 1969, pp. 57-68. The Ivor diggers. Declaration of the grounds and reasons, why we the poor inhabitants of the parish of Ivor in Buckinghamshire revealed that there were further digger colonies in Barnet in Hertfordshire, Enfield in Middlesex, Dunstable in Bedfordshire, Bosworth in Leicestershire and further colonies at unknown locations in Gloucestershire and Nottinghamshire. It also revealed that after the failure of the Surrey colony, the diggers had left their children to be cared for by parish funds. Influence <inaudible> 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 The San Francisco Diggers During the middle and late 1960s, the San Francisco Diggers, who took their name from the original English Diggers, opened stores which simply gave away their stock, provided free food, medical care, transport, and temporary housing. They also organized free music concerts and works of political art. Some of their happenings included the Death of Money Parade, Intersection Game, Invisible Circus, and Death of Hippie, Birth of Free. 
The Diggers were a radical community action group of community activists and improv actors operating from 1966 to 1968 based in the Haight-Ashbury neighborhood of San Francisco. Their politics were such that they have sometimes been categorized as left-wing. More precisely, they were community anarchists who blended a desire for freedom with a consciousness of the community in which they lived. They were closely associated with and shared a number of members with a guerrilla theater group named the San Francisco Mime Troupe. Like the original English diggers, they envisioned a society free from private property, and all forms of buying and selling. Actor Peter Coyote was a founding member of the diggers. <laughs> Other The American diggers were echoed in the 1960s in the UK see Alternative Society and Sid Rawl. Since the revival of anarchism in the British anti-Rhodes movement, the diggers have been celebrated as precursors of land squatting and communalism. April 1, 1999, on the 350th anniversary of Gerardwin Stanley and the diggers' occupation of the English Civil War on the same hill, the Land Is Ours organised a rally, then occupied land at St George's Hill near Weybridge, Surrey. In 2011, an annual festival began in Wigan to celebrate the diggers. In 2012, the second annual festival proved a great success and the sixth took place in 2016. In Wellingborough, a festival has also been held annually since 2011. Bolton diggers were established in 2013 and have promoted the Commons as a foil to privatisation. They have established community food gardens, cooperatives and the Commonwealth Café, a pay-as-you-feel café using surplus food from supermarkets. Writings One, Many archive resources are available at the diggers.org site about both the English and San Francisco diggers. 17th century truth lifting up its head above scandals 1649 dedication dated the 16th of October 1648 Gerard Win Stanley the new law of righteousness the 26th of January 1649 Gerard Win Stanley the true levelers standard ADVANCED or the state of community opened and presented to the sons of men William Everard John Palmer John South John Corton William Taylor Christopher Clifford John Barker Gerardwin Stanley, Richard Goodgroom, Thomas Starr, William Hogrill, Robert Sawyer, Thomas Eder, Henry Bickerstaff, John Taylor, and C., 20 April 1649. A declaration from the poor oppressed people of England, directed to all that call themselves, or are called lords of manners, through this nation. Gerardwin Stanley, John Coulton, John Palmer, Thomas Starr, Samuel Webb, John Heyman, Thomas Edgar, William Hogrell, Daniel Whedon, Richard Wheeler, Nathaniel Yates, William Clifford, John Harrison, Thomas Hayden, James Hall. James Manley, Thomas Barnard, John South, Robert Sayer, Christopher Clifford, John Beachy, William Coombs, Christopher Boncher, Richard Taylor, Urian Worthington, Nathaniel Holcomb, Giles Child, Sr., John Webb, Thomas Yarwell, William Bonington. John Ash, Ralph Eyre, John P.R.A., John Wilkinson, Anthony Spire, Thomas East, Alan Brown, Edward Parrott, Richard Gray, John Mordy, John Bachelor, William Child, William Hatham, Edward Witcher, William Tench, 1 June 1649. A letter to the Lord Fairfax, and his Council of War, with divers questions to the lawyers, and ministers, proving it an undeniable equity, that the common people ought to dig, plough, plant and dwell upon the commons, without hiring them, or paying rent to any on the behalf of those who have begun to dig upon George Hill in Surrey. Gerard Winstonley, the 9th of June 1649. A declaration of the bloody and unchristian acting of William Starr and John Taylor of Walton, the 22nd of June 1649. Gerard Winstonley an appeal to the House of Commons, desiring their answer, whether the common people shall have the quiet enjoyment of the commons and wasteland, the 11th of July 1649. Gerard Winstonley, John Barker, and Thomas Starr a watchword to the City of London, and the Army, the 26th of August 1649. Gerard Winstonley to His Excellency the Lord Fairfax and the Council of War the brotherly request of those that are called diggers showeth December 1649, John Heyman, and Wren, Hen. 
Barton, John Coulton in the behalf of others called the Diggers, Robert C. O. S. Sala, John Plammer, Jacob Hurd in the Clark Papers Vol. 2, 1894 to my Lord General and his Council of War the 8th of December 1649, Gerard Winstanley Stanley in the Clark Papers Vol. 2, 1894 the Diggers Song circa 1649, 1650 in the Clark Papers Vol. 2, 1894 attributed to Gerard Winstanley Stanley by the historian C. H. Firth, the editor of the Clark Papers papers. The Declaration and Standard of the Levellers of England, delivered in a speech to His Excellency the Lord Gen. Fairfax, on Friday last at Whitehall, William Everard several pieces gathered into one volume 1650, preface dated 20 December 1649, a second edition of five of Gerard Wynne Stanley's works printed for Giles Calvert, the printer for nearly all the diggers' writings. A New Year's gift for the Parliament and Army, showing, what the kingly power is, and that the cause of those they call diggers the 1st of January 1650, Gerard Wynne Stanley England's spirit unfolded or an encouragement to take the engagement, ca. February or March 1650, Gerard Sick Wynne Stanley. A vindication of those whose endeavours is only to make the earth a common treasury, called diggers the 4th of March 1650, Gerard Wynne Stanley. Fire in the Bush, the 19th of March 1650, Gerard Wynne Stanley. An appeal to all Englishmen to judge between bondage and freedom, sent from those that began to dig upon George Hill in Surrey, but now are carrying on that public work upon the little heath in the parish of Cobham. The 26th of March 1650, Gerard Sick Wynne Stanley and 24 others. A letter taken at Wellingborough, March 1650, probably written by Gerard Wynne Stanley. An humble request to the ministers of both universities and to all lawyers in every inns of court. The 9th of April 1650, Gerard Wynne Stanley. Letter to Lady Eleanor Davies. The 4th of December 1650, Gerard Wynne Stanley. The law of freedom in a platform or true magistracy restored. 1652, Gerard Wynne Stanley. Topic: 1960s to 70s. Ringo Levio Emmett Grogan Broadgate Gnome Mag 67 to 71 Truro Diggers Cell Magazine 77 to 81 International Times Topic Influence on literature and popular culture In 1966 a faction of the San Francisco Mime Troupe formed a diggers group in the hippie community in the Haight-Ashbury district of San Francisco. A strongly anti-establishment group, they handed out free food in Golden Gate Park. The World Turned Upside Down by Leon Rosselson, 1975, a song about the diggers and their activities on St. George's Hill in 1649. This song was performed by Dick Gorkin on his album Handful of Earth, 1981, by the Barracudas on their album Endeavor to Persevere, 1984, by Out of the Rain on their album A Common Treasury, 1985, by Billy Bragg on his Between the Wars EP, 1985, by Chumbawamba on the B-side of their single Time Bomb, 1993, by Four to the Bar on Another Side in 1995, by Attila the Stockbroker with Barnstormer on The Siege of Shoreham, 1996, by Oyster Band on their albums Shouting End of Life and Alive and Shouting, 1995 and 1996, by Karen Casey formerly of the Irish band Solis, on her Songlines album, 1997, by Clandestine, a Houston-based Celtic group, on their To Anybody at All album, 1999, by The Fagans, an Australian folk group, on their album, Turning Fine, 2002, and by Seattle Celt rock band Coventry on the album Red Hair and Black Leather, 2005. Wynne Stanley, a fictionalized 1975 film portrait of the diggers, directed by Kevin Brownlow, was based upon the novel Comrade Jacob by David Court. As Meat Loves Salt by Maria McCann, Harcourt, 2001 ISBN 0-15601226X deals in part with the founding and destruction of a fictional digger colony at Page Common near London. Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials trilogy is strongly influenced by Winstanley's writings, including the idea of the Republic of Heaven. 
Carol Churchill's 1976 play Light Shining in Buckinghamshire, named after the Digger pamphlet and set in the English Civil War, charts the rise and fall of the Diggers and other radical ideas from the 1640s. Jonathan Kemp's 2010 play The Digger's Daughter tells the tale of the Diggers and quotes much of Winstanley's teaching directly. <laughs> Footnotes <laughs>